Hey class, for the next project you're going to be exploring a line in space through wire. We could think of it as a linear mass or volume like a pipe or a pillar. So a mass or volume stretched or elongated would appear as a line and that's basically what wire is. So you're going to be using wire and we'll be talking a bit about what line is, an element so often used it's like almost ubiqu it's ubiquitous, we don't even notice it. But we're going to be using actual material, like I said. So it'll be in 3D, not just ink on paper. And I want to make a distinction really quick that um, it's not about making a form and then decorating the surface of it. Um, it's actually becoming the lines and space in their own right versus like a surface articulation. So. We need to make sure we're thinking about like the edges and the continuous movement of it as we go through this project, okay? We could think of line as a path created by a moving point or object on 2D, but in 3D we could think of it also still having a movement or direction, and in that way we could think of it as a story that you almost read. You're like, what is he talking about? Well. It has a beginning point, a middle, and it goes through a progression, right? And we, our eye reads how, how it works in space. So you want to have, like a good story, a beginning with a strong ending and a plot in between. So where your lines go in your sculpture, you want to think about how they move and the style of them being interesting. And part of that narrative is the idea of line quality. And there's a lot of different qualities to lines on paper, but also in wire and 3D. We could think of very angular lines having a very different feeling than things that are circly, spirally, curly, curved. So the types of lines have an effect. When we have smooth lines or jagged, zigzag, or rectilinear lines, it's going to have a different feeling. And the way they interact is going to have develop your composition in a complex way by how you twist them together. Uh, if you make a butt joint where they just join up to each other, they butt up, or if one goes around another. So this is kind of showing you an example that this is a 2D picture, obviously, but how the lines fill in space, they capture the shape of the space. Well. When you're doing that in the real world, when not on paper, paper is the real world, but I mean actual space, then it'll still create the same type of thing. It'll create a space or a volume that you're going to capture inside of those wire shapes. And this will give you the idea of volume, right? And it will be there because it will have volume, it will be in space, but it won't be a solid volume, basically. You can kind of see it again in this type of a drawing where implied lines happen. Our eye connects it together, and same with the lines of the wire. So you need to be aware as you work about what kinds of volumes you're going to work with and how the lines interact with each other. Okay? We could think of this with an example. If you take a piece of paper with me right now and draw a line down the middle of it, okay? Just however you want, like say like this. All the way across and then take a piece then take some scissors and cut down that line so cut along it carefully you're going to end up with a gap it won't the, the thickness of the scissors will take away part of it right and after that you'll be left with two shapes two planes because piece of paper is a plane in space and those two shapes are defined by this line well, the spaces around your wires and the wires that your wires enclose will be like these two um, shapes. They'll actually, it'll give the idea of a volume, and the lines define that volume, the edges of it. And so that's going to be an important thing for you to think about. I keep saying it because I'm really trying to get the idea across. If you do that, the illustration will actually become clear to you. This rooster shows up pretty clearly because this is hollow on the inside. But this wire sculpture defines the volume through the extra lines. And that's the kind of work we're going to be doing. 
it uses it uses crisscrossing lines to do it. It's a pretty interesting sculpture. We're gonna look at some pieces from art history. Alexander Calder is a really interesting artist, the inventor of the mobile. Um, he does a lot of different type of work over the years. He did, I should say, he's not alive any longer. Some of it was with wire. Some of it was with um, big planes of space that move with the mobiles. And then he did some really large scale, what he called stables, stables um, big sculptures that were public art as well, amongst other things. We're going to look at, well, we can't look at it together because of the way that this slideshow will work, but I'm going to post a video later about this objects that he made that he performs like a narrative, which kind of ties into our last project. And he made a lot of different works that reference um, fun things. One of them was a circus works. That's the page I'm going to post about that he actually had a circus that he performed where the wire things moved around. But he also made things that reference art history. This is um, very simple and kind of kitschy in a way and almost funny. And you're like, okay, it's kind of almost stupid and weird. Um, but it's also really interesting. See how he signed his name down there like that? Because he's referencing this really old piece from the Etruscan era about the founders of Rome. And so if you think about it, he's really, he's almost making fun of, but also commenting on the way in which history gets broken up over time. Um, not broken up, disseminated, I guess, in a way, and how people start to think about it. Um, and there's a kind of comedy in this that um, kind of brings it to light in a way that we can think about how myth operates nowadays. He did other things that reference myth, Hercules and the lion. So he he's very aware of things even when he's doing something playful. He's not just doing it randomly. He's thinking about what he's doing and um, having an having an intentionality about it. And that's what I want you to do when you're working with this project. So I'm going to post this video of him performing his circus at the Whitney Museum in the module. I want you to go and watch that after you watch this lecture. Um, it's an old video because it happened a while ago, so it's a little bit uh, rough in its cinematography, but it's still pretty interesting. And it's interesting how he includes something that's functional and kind of playful, but serious that he takes seriously into the world of sculpture and art. That's part of what makes it interesting. You can do something that's abstract with this project, but you need to think about how it relates to the space. This kind of goes on the wall. That's fine. It's fully 3D, but it has a back to it. So when you do this, you're going to want to think about where the top and the bottom of something is, how it sits in the world. Does it sit on a table, the floor, a desk? Does it go on the wall? These are the kind of things you want to think about when you're coming up with your idea. Also, you're going to want to think about the overall shape called the gestalt. Okay, but your work isn't supposed to be flat. This is a flat example of steel, and I don't want you to make flat work. You'll see in your project sheet that needs to be fully in the round. But I like the way that this um, wire piece thinks about the overall shape to such an extent that even if uh, shadow of it is legible. You're going to want to think especially about does it read from far away? What do I mean by read? If you see it from far away, can you tell what it is in essence? Albeit not the details, that's the gestalt. Because um, when you're working with wire and they overlap each other, the parts and pieces are going to start to look like they blend in a lot together. So you're going to want to try to make something that really feels like the overall outside image of it makes sense so that people can see what you're doing when they look at it from far away and then when they get closer it has more visual interest okay we're going to start a project by kind of doing some contour line drawings and contour drawing is an interesting way to think about this because Contour drawing is to find the surface of the object in drawing by doing convex and concave lines. 
um, where it, well, it gets tighter and further apart where it goes con concave, it goes further apart and closer together is convex. So it's in find the surface in one direction or cross contour. And if you build something like this out of wire, it'll look a lot like that rooster. And it'll have the cross contour. So you want to think about that type of thing when you're planning this. How your lines are going to define their volumes, the lines of wire. Her work, Wendy Ballin, is very interesting because she's dealing with skeletons and she has a lot of um, contour and form and density in some parts of the skeletons to give focal points to it. I think she uses her wire really well because bones have a linear quality but then she builds up mass into them in a really interesting way and she's capturing shapes with a feeling of line but then building up the density like the rib cages in the head um how does your piece stand this is an important question she has if you can see here really lightly a line of some type of monofilament or wire that holds it up okay was it necessary for her to do this Maybe. She could have possibly somehow got a rod in the foot coming down into this base and held it up. Did it add to the piece here? I don't know. Maybe that's kind of something that would have been better to work out a little bit more. You're going to want to think about how it stands. A lot of people tend to want to use monofilament, which is like fishing line and things like that. But I have to say to you, it can be kind of a cheesy thing because no one really believes it's floating and then you want to ask yourself why does it need to hang or float if you have a good reason then go for it and I think these pieces may have a good reason because she wants this light gesture to hold it up and it's really more about the form of the skeleton doing something that's akin to like ballet or something and so to keep it um, to be able to get the pose she needs to be able to have something on it and that's fine but sometimes people use it as a crutch, and so that's why I want to be a little bit more critical of that. Okay. This is an interesting piece of hers. It does the same type of thing with wire. She has a theme of skeletons, painted steel wire. And I like how she's used an extra color here with the red. You have an option to do that. It says on your project sheet you could use some colored wire if you wanted to draw attention to something. This is a good piece to show you um, the gestalt as well. See how the arms of the figure are very clearly outlined? Well, if this wasn't red, it would just look like a big mass on the side of the rib cage. That didn't make any sense, okay? Because the white would just bleed into the white. And so this brings up my idea that I'm really trying to come get across to you, which is if you don't have a good gestalt, and if something is the wrong kind of shape or outline, you just think, oh, it'll make sense, I'll just put it on top of it, right? Like this, if she would have done it in white. What will end up happening is, even in person, not just on image, when you look at it, it'll just look like a big mass It's part of the other thing. It won't read as a separate object. So it's like very difficult. If you got a, wanted to get a nose on here, you need to make sure it sticks off the face. Otherwise, it ends up just kind of reading as a weird little bump on something. And it's not reading as a separate element. So you got to really think about how you display those things, the little parts on something and what's behind it, because you'll be able to see through. So that's why it's really important to kind of think of the overall shape of your sculpture. I really like this piece a lot because it has a kind of dancing funness to it. It almost feels like they could be playing an instrument or something like that. So we talked about the monofilament. This would be an example where she didn't use the monofilament when she got it to stand up without it, and I like it better. If she had something hanging, she may have actually used a little bit of something hanging right there, actually, now that I say that. I still think it'd be stronger without it, but we don't have, if we need these poses, then maybe she needs it. That's fine, right? But there's a reason for it. Okay. On the wall would be good. 
I think it's totally fine to have a, a back to your sculpture, so to speak. It's in the round, but it has a part that's not as important, shall I say. Not a back that's flat, but a part that's not as important. This is fully in the round, but you don't need to see it from every part. This is another example. I think both these use wire really interestingly. Um, this one's using like webbing almost. And this one's using a really fun, crazy type of quality to the wire to be roots that are visible. You're going to start with the continuous contour drawing, some line drawings over photographs. What do we mean by continuous line drawing? Well, I'm going to post some videos of me doing some. The point is, what it is, is you don't lift your pen or pencil. So, when you're doing it, the main, main, main important thing is, with continuous line drawings, you keep your pen and pencil on the page the whole time you're doing it. Okay? You don't go lift. Why is that? Why is it important? Well, I'll show you in the next slide. And then you can deviate from the photograph and create your own designs after you do some over a photograph. First, do them over the photographs. And you'll transform them into your final drawings. So you'll take your ideas and work through them. Okay? Let me show you what I mean on the next slide. These are the type of drawings you need. Continuous contour, not like this one. Why? Well, imagine you wanted to make this out of wire. What would be the problem with it? I'll pause and see if you think about it. These three shapes of wire would just fall, right? There wouldn't be anything to hold them up. And so you have to have a line of wire coming from somewhere else to hold them. And that's why I'm having you guys do drawings that are like this. Because if you draw like that, then you'll have a good plan for how you can create something like that, right? And you could have just done this even very simply just by doing that, and then it would connect, right? The problem with this is it's kind of boring, so when you want to get some volumes, you have to have extra lines, right? And so these extra lines are going to make what you have interesting. And so that's why I want you to do your drawings like this. Because you're going to need to work through your ideas in a way that will actually work with the wire. That's why you're doing it, because this is more closely related to how the wire works. So you're planning in a way that helps you, basically. These are examples of people who do things like that contour, like almost continuous contour wire sculptures using these type of drawings fully in the round. And this guy, he has a really cool way because he almost looks like he's perfectly capturing the sketch. And that's pretty amazing. So you could use any type of... Um, imagery that you're interested in. This is Audrey Hepburn from a Roman Holiday. You know, it doesn't have to be just an object. It could be people. This is another film scene with Audrey Hepburn. Name that movie <laughs> if you know what it is. You're not going to be doing it like this, though, where it's basically totally flat in a little bit of 3D elements. You're going to be doing it fully 3D. Okay? These are mostly, these drawings are mostly to get your brain going. So you can think about how the wire is going to work and plan some stuff out. And then you can go, kind of go off from there if you want to get more creative and don't just copy the photograph, okay? That's the main point, just to get yourself going so you actually have something to do right away and not get overly frustrated. So fully 3D, prime example here, hands, this is a fully 3D type of drawing, and this is how someone made it, in the round, you can see it all the way around it. This is interesting because I thought about where the bottom was and how it was going to sit on the desk or table, okay? Also once you notice how they looped, the looped, the looped, looped some of the wires and it brought a focal, it got focal point to there and also density and volume and that makes it stand out a bit more. That's important to think about as well. So when you're doing your drawings, um, you may want to actually, let me go back to one, thicken some of these pieces up to say where you want to really draw attention to. Okay, like you have, you could do your drawing thin like that. Okay, and then you can take maybe a thicker pencil or 
pin and then or just kind of use the side of it and say okay I really want it to be thick right here and build up the feeling of difference between the two people I want it to be thicker so it shows the difference between them right and then um, thinner wherever they are separate so you can feel the feeling of them separately okay those are things to think about when you're doing this whole thing so let's keep keep on going here we have the hands I showed you the picture the photograph the drawing and then someone did the one of them this is the executed sculpture that's finished in the round okay the interesting guy Nathan Carter he does stuff that he uses his drawings and paintings to practice. He does a lot of those in conjunction with sculpture. Interesting to think about. These are not as 3D as I would like you to have your stuff, but it's really interesting as a way of thinking and how he makes his sculptures and paintings and how they correlate back and forth with each other. Um, so I think if you're really into painting and drawing, which a lot of you are art majors and have different um, made different disciplines rather than sculpture, maybe photography or painting or drawing or printmaking or graphic design, then this project can actually relate really well for you to think about how your ideas can translate into three-dimensional space in a way that's pretty interesting. What are you going to use for your tools? Basically all you need is a pair of pliers that have a side cutter on them. If you don't have a pair of pliers, of regular pliers, um, then you're going to need something else like diagonal cutters to cut the wire. Um, and then you could use regular pliers. I think I recommend something with a little finer point to it, like needle nose, because you can get a little more detail in your work. You're going to want to think a lot about how wires connect to each other. You're going to want to create cross connections with your work. You don't want um, just to try to have wires go by each other. The reason why is the strength is going to come when you have that connection point. Okay, when your wire goes like this and then wraps around and goes onto its merry way, another wire goes through it or even wraps again, you're going to have a lot more strength. Okay, if you don't want loose connections, and then because if you try to just wrap around something you'll end up twisting the other thing you want it to be around it if you get too much wire and excess of it you can kind of take your pliers and give yourself a little loop somewhere and tighten some of it up and that'll be it's a good way to work as well i'll do some demonstration videos but i just want you to have that idea right away and see an illustration of it helpful hints really helpful. Use your pliers as much as possible. You're going to have hand fatigue if you try to do this all by hand. Generally organic shape sculptures are interesting. They work better than geometric ones because it's harder to make the material. It's easier to make it feel like life lifelike in the way of non-machine made things like organic things. It's kind of pretty hard to make it really exacting and rectangular sort of way. So you can do it, I've seen people do it, but overall I would go this direction, it'll save yourself a little bit of headaches. Um, bulky connections are a great way to create emphasis, that's what I was talking about back here on this piece. See how there's thicker connections, bulkier ones in certain places? Well those are going to create more of an emphasis for the eye. So you want to think about where those connections are at. When you make a mistake, don't despair. Ask for help. Please ask for help. I know I'm not in the classroom with you. Um, I wish I was in a lot of ways for this, but we have we have the situation we have right in life right now. We're working with it. Email me. Message me. Post on the boards. Reach out and get some help. Okay. Don't sit there and despair and get fresh overly frustrated on your own reach out for help okay it's really important the main type of wire i recommend for you to have is an iron wire that's black um, it's very versatile you can even weld it and solder it if you wanted to if it's thicker you can weld it but um it's 
called rebar tie wire. There's other types of wire you can use if you have them. The stainless steel wire, it's very expensive um, compared to this. Copper wire, you may want to buy a small amount of that for some color or something. You can buy this at like places like um, Joanne's Fabric Hobby Lobby. It comes in brass as well. Um, there's aluminum wires that work pretty well. And they um, are often used for like using under sculptures and for armatures and things so if, if you had something else like that you could use it as well but the main one i recommend is that one for affordability so next up you need to find your photographs to work from and like i said think about the gestalt that is the definition organized whole that is perceived as more than the sum of its parts this is a good image for that it's um, like a skeleton skull right but also it's individual pieces so I want to think about the overall shape of that and you're going to want to do those drawings on there not just line drawings like this but start defining the surface through more lines like the contour drawings i showed you some student examples this is an okay project turned out pretty well i love how they got the detail down here of where it plugs in i think this part could use some more work it's a little boring but the way that they got the earphone parts are great and then this and how it was actually had movement to it. This is a piece that a student did that was um, out of rod, steel, steel rod, not wire, um, so thicker sort of pencil rod. Um, and that was really beautifully executed. A little bit too much like a line drawing, but still really has a lot of gracefulness to it. This is a good piece. I like how they built up density in certain spots to give our eye a little too flat um, for what this project was so that was some of why they lost points but nonetheless a lot of really nice detail work and clean connections I'm not here in per I'm not there in person with you to you know be able to help you realize this but this type of connection these things right here are fine craftsmanship right and that's what you need to have and care about as craftsmanship problems with this craftsmanship right here See how that is all like wonky? Would have been nicer if they would have been able to, albeit it's hard. And this shows you why the geometry is hard to have like a really straight line right here, right? Because that's what they actually wanted. And it would have made it feel more intentional. Same with this here. They ended up having to um, fix it by overly wrapping it, right? So you gotta really um, take your time and get some nice clean connections. If you get a piece sticking out, then cut it off so it doesn't just stick there and look like a little tail. This is a cool piece. They did out, they decided they wanted to do it out of copper wire um, to find the guitar. I think we could have added a couple more lines um, to give some volume, but it had a nice amount of volume. And I wish they would have gotten um, all six tuning pegs. That would have been good. But it turned out really well. This one's a really nice piece. It shows you how the bulkiness of the wire defines some of the forms. A rabbit. Pretty good size. Maybe a couple more lines in here would have been nice, but they really did a good job on using the density of the wire to define the form. Nice airplane someone did. I think this one could have used a little bit more thickness on the wings, but really nice job and I would have liked to see um, in here if they would have actually given it a little bit more shape by not instead of just crossing back and forth maybe looping it a little bit so it actually popped out a bit more but and then I think they could have probably like I said they could have done with just having a little bit more of a thickness like they actually add an extra layer and this shows you the difficulty also they had of um, trying to create something really geometric because it's rough. This is the type of tail right there that they should have gotten rid of to clean it up. Another one here. These are things. This is craftsmanship problems right there. So it gives you an idea of what we're looking for to have clean craftsmanship. I like this piece because this person made... Um, two or three of these rats and put them in various places that kind of 
made it look like their house was being invaded sort of, so it was a thoughtful idea. I think they could have added a little more density. They have some here in a few spots to, to build it up. Oops, grab the photo. To build it up a little bit more, I meant to draw on it. I grab it. Um, they could have built it up a little bit more in a few spots, like here maybe. Um, the ears could have had a little more definition. And that would have made it more interesting. But they're doing pretty good work here. It has a nice quality to the line of fire. This person did an octopus and they decided instead of having a lot of it open to start to really get very um, dense with their line work, the wire work, right? So they still have forms. I don't want you, this is on the very edge of how dense I want you to do it, okay? They could have tried to go like this and just wrap it and wrap it and wrap it and make it one solid mass. That is not what you need to do. That is not the goal. You do not do that, okay? Repeat it. Do not wrap it and wrap it and make a mass. They're on the very edge of how close they could get. But the whole middle of it is still actually empty. And so I want you to define it through shapes and space, not some densely wrapped mass, okay? So it's fine that they did it all, they did it well, they were on the edge, but they did, a, did an interesting pattern and it worked out well for them. Okay, so make sure you do not just wrap it, wrap it into a giant mass. You have to leave the spaces. This piece is a little flatter than we'd like, but it's really nicely done and a lot of detail in it. They could have just added a little volume, but I think they did a really good job of capturing that feeling. They liked working with fish and koi fish, and I think it turned out pretty beautifully. This is a rattlesnake someone did. This is showing it from different angles. I love how the rattle turned out with the tight wrapping. I mean, they really defined the snake well through all the little connection points. This shows you from the side how the eyes didn't quite line up, and it tells you why I'm saying about the gestalt, because it can get confusing pretty quickly. But they have a nice enough gestalt so it pulls it off okay. This piece turned out really well. And this is a little too dense. Densely wrapped. See how it's almost fully. This, but it is hollow so it's okay. But here this is basically one solid wrapped wire. And that's, a, that's okay because they still have the space. But it would have been, I would have liked them to show some of the spaces in between because it broke down. But overall, they're not just wrapping it solid as one big object. And the feeling of the tree moving in the wind and the way they photographed this is really nice. So they did a really great job. I believe this person's a photography major and shows up in their photography of their sculpture. So this becomes an interesting idea. Um, there's a famous sculptor named Jeff Wall who actually, he's a, he's a photographer, not a sculptor, I should say. His name's Jeff Wall. And I say, I kind of said sculptor, sculptor because he actually makes things to photograph them. And it's pretty interesting if you're a photographer major, he does things that are kind of fictional and messes with things by making them, and then he uses the photograph to keep going with that idea. You might want to look up his work if you're into that type of idea. So he's a photographer, he's known for, he sells the prints, the images but he makes things as part of it, so that's pretty interesting. You kind of see that kind of influence almost here. And this person, um, not the best place to photograph it outside. It got a little bit too much texture in the background, but it works pretty well. I think they did something interesting by using a bead here and kind of some other colored wire, so that could be a way for you to add some emphasis. Their connections are a little too loose and all over the place, I'm fine with you having a free sort of style to it. It just, they kind of didn't, they should have kept adjusting their shape, shapes. And this is a spot where um, it may be, if you did have two pieces of, two pieces, two pliers, it could help you because you can hold on to something right here and then bend this without messing this up. So, you know, you could get more of the form that they're trying to get. They're kind of getting it all over the place. So, I think, you know, they can start with a weird shape for the head to begin with, like a teardrop, 
if they actually kind of had a little bit more close to where the head was and then when they started wrapping they could interconnect it a bit better. Same with the torso, they're kind of getting strange shapes. I guess now that I see it they're trying to show um, breasts and things that don't really show up at first because of the way they have the wire. Once I started drawing over it I realized that they weren't quite capturing what they're looking for. So you know you're going to want to think about um, the placement of things and holding on to like one wire with another by the way you wrap them together. Keep it in place is what I'm saying. When you wrap one around it, it keeps it in place. You want to think about that when you're building your form. You have your picture, but then how do you build it? So that takes us through um, all the student examples. This project sheet is going to be in Canvas. Um, so you see here the objective is to make a wire sculpture of your own design, exploring the qualities of it, bending, twisting, joining. You can solder it if you want. I don't expect you to. You're going to want rebar wire, pliers and diagonals, like or diagonals if you don't have side cutters on them. And you could add those things to it. Um, it has to be at least 6 inches by 4 inches in any direction. And fully in the round. Your final drawings and photograph exercises have to be in the discussion board. And you have to submit at least 3 photographs of your sculpture from various angles. You really need to put on a neutral background so I can see it and then post photos to the final critique. Okay, this is how I grade it's in the syllabus creative resolution, refinement, surface quality, clarity of conception, and expressiveness. You have to explore the material, participate in the sketches, and all those things. I reference Alexander Calder, Calder in this, you can look him up for more of his works. Ruth Asawa. Nathan Carter, those are people to look at, and then other works by other artists in their slideshow. You know, those would be, you might want to research a bit more, basically, is what I'm saying. Look up other um, artworks by some of these people. Okay, let me just pop up Canvas here for a second. And you're going to have, you have right now in your Canvas the egg drop. Well, I'm going to publish this one, Wire Submission and Critique. It'll be renamed Wire Project. That's a product sheet. Then there's going to be the discussion like you did with the egg drop, this lecture, demonstration videos, and then down here you're going to have a critique where you're going to post photos of and then comment on at least two other people's work. You're going to have to obviously but not be mean, and I'm going to moderate it. The point of this is um, for you to um, begin to develop dialogue around how you talk about art and sculpture. And I'm going to post a reading and video, if I can find the video I did about it. I'm going to post some readings about what is critique and how we do it. But you didn't have to do this for the last project, but you're going to start doing it on these projects. okay? So it'll be part of posting a posting discussion board for you to have interactions. And I actually may switch it so you have to comment on more than two. Two is really not enough. I want you guys to engage with each other's work and um, as I say in the uh, in progress ones, show each other some love by sharing your work with each other. I'm also going to have a page um, down here that'll have that um, Alexander Calder video posted on it. Okay, so that concludes the wire lecture. I hope that if you ever have any questions, you can email me for sure using the inbox and email me, but also you have this question and answer cafe up here and I think you guys would benefit from posting in here and talking to each other about things and seeing what other people post because you can all um, chime in on things if you have questions to help each other but also if I po if someone posts a question you may have it then I'll answer it for all of you you know this is a good way to talk to each other as a class so a couple people have used it but I recommend using it more often. And just as a reminder, um, you're going to want to stay up on your deadlines. So on yours, it should have something like coming up over here. If you go student view, let's go to student view real quick. It should have a to do over here for you that you can do in announcements. You're going to want to log in and check your announcements and stay up on things, your due dates and stuff. You know, I haven't posted the 
the wire the wire module yet, so that's why it's not showing up in the student view. All right, take care, you guys. I hope you're doing good out there and staying safe, social distancing, and taking care of yourselves. All right, bye.